how do you determine who your ideal client is? What is it that makes them ideal? So I had to sit back and I had to think about and write them out. Like what, what are those, the things that make my ideal clients ideal? So for me, it broke down to three things. Now this is for me, this might not be the same for you. It might be similar though. Um, for me, it was three things that came to mind. One is budget. Ideal clients pay your price. They pay the budget. They pay whatever you tell them the price is. And if they don't, then they're not ideal clients. That's one of the things that makes them ideal clients. They have the budget. They have the budget to do what it is they want to do. They don't, you don't have to take anything out of proposal. You don't have to sit here and talk about it and break it down line by line, itemize the proposal or go over and explain everything in it. They pay. It's like, okay, let's go. They're ready to go. Now, they might go with the lowest option because I always present options when I present proposals. Be a, a, a basic, a, why well, I say basic? I say a standard, a deluxe, and a premium. Maybe they might just go with the standard. That's fine too. I'm okay with that too. But they, they pay it. There's no, hey, can we take this out? Maybe we can we switch this? There's no, there's no haggling over the price. Ideal clients pay your price. That's what makes them ideal. And they're not doing that. They're not ideal clients. Plain and simple. At least for me. I don't know. At least for me. Number two. Number two is we can define what success is working with this client. Like we know what what winning is. What is what are we trying to achieve? We know a goal. We know. We know what we want to see. We 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 know what what success looks like. What we want what we want it to look like. So that means we have stuff we can measure to get us there. There are metrics. There's what did they call them? The, the KPIs, the key performance indicators. We know what we're looking for. So now we know what to measure. We have these analytics we're going to be looking at, which for me is very important. Analytics. I like to look at stuff. Even when someone says they want to, they need a social media strategy. I'm going to say, hey, yeah, I understand social media strategy, but what are we measuring with this? Because we can't be relying on followers and views and likes. Those are vanity metrics. Like the real metrics, what we want to measure are conversion. And this happens on the website. So if you want a social media strategy, we really got to be looking at what your website is doing because this is what's going to tell us how that social media strategy is going. Are we converting people? Are they buying something? Are they, are they booking a call, scheduling a meeting? Are they downloading your ebook, sign up for your, your newsletter, email loser? So at the very least, are we getting an email address for them so we can reach back out to them at some point? If they're not buying now, can we continue to market to them outside of this social media platform? That's to me, that's what a social media strategy should be built around. Like the analytics on the website, how many people are we converting? Where's the traffic coming from? What's the source, the main source of the traffic? Are they coming from Instagram, Facebook? Google search, organic search. We're like, where are they coming from? YouTube, where are they coming from? And once we know that, we know that'll better help us out with our social media strategy. How much time are they spending on the website? What are they clicking on? Stuff like that. Kind of got off on a tangent, but I want to measure stuff so we can know how close we are to get into that goal and where we stand with that goal. So that's number two for me. You know, they, they, they don't just want the content, they need it. I guess that's a simpler way of putting it. There's an actual need for the content. They don't just want it. They need that. Like they want to see something specific happen with that content. They got a goal. There's, this is what we want to see happen. We want increased sales. We want these type of clients. We want whatever. We want more appointments. More calls. All right. We got to measure something. So that's what it, they need that content. So that's number two for me. On to number three. So we talked about budget, ideal clients. They got a budget and they're paying the price. There's no haggling, negotiating over prices. They see the price, you give them the options, they choose one. That's number one. Number two is they actually need the content. There's a, there's a goal they're trying to achieve with it. They got, you know, we know what success, what we want to achieve with it, and we're going to work toward that, and we're going to measure some things along the way. So that's number two. And number three, on what makes my ideal clients ideal and what I want to see from them, what I need to see we're working with them, or I wouldn't be working with them, what I want is, can we replicate this? Can we take what I, can I take what I do with this client, package it up, package it up, 
I know the budget range for it. I know the, what we're measuring with it. I know what success looks like for it because I know what to measure. I know the metrics, all this stuff. I can see the difference. Stuff we can take. We got the numbers. Can I replicate this and take it to a business right up the street that's similar to this one and sell them the same package or something similar? Can I take this, duplicate it or replicate it and use it with other businesses? That's what I need. So imagine doing work for a client and not only it's like imagine working with somebody who's, you know, your actual clients, who's less than ideal, doing all this work for them. Yeah, you get money, but the stuff don't really work when it's trying to. So if I shoot a podcast for this person who don't really have a business, they don't have a business. They just want content. They want to show up on YouTube. They got some thoughts and opinions about things. Or maybe they do have a small business or coaching business, which these online coaches and consultants like don't mess. Stay away from them. They're like, they're, those are not real businesses. Those are Instagram businesses. Stay away from anybody on, to call himself a coach, consultant. They don't have a website. They ain't got nothing. They don't have a budget. So that's number one. They ain't got budget. Stay away from them. But let's say I'm working with one. They got, we're shooting some, some stuff for their podcast. That stuff really don't work for an attorney over here 